Trigonometric equations can be divided into two categories, identities and conditional equations. Identities are true for every angle, but conditional equations are true for certain angles only. Trigonometric functions are periodic, repeating every 360 degrees. Therefore, if there is one solution, then there are an infinite number of solutions. In grade 11, you would have had lots of practice solving trig equations, even quadratic trig equations, which required factorizing and resulted in two or more solutions. You would have given solutions for specific intervals, as well as the general solution. We will build on these concepts by incorporating our knowledge of compound and double angles. Remember that if an interval is not given, you have to find the general solution to the trig equation. Here we see the sine function created by a unit circle. Because the angle rotates around the circle, the sine function repeats once every full rotation. Similarly for the cosine function. We say that the period of the sine and cosine functions is 360 degrees. For tangent function, the period is 180 degrees. Example 1. Finding general solutions for sine using compound or double angles. In this example, you need to determine the general solution of the equation. Sine theta times sine of the angle 3 theta over 2 plus cos of the angle 3 theta over 2 times cos theta equals negative square root 3 over 2. The left-hand side of the equation contains the compound expansion for sine. Hence, we can rewrite the equation as sine brackets theta plus 3 theta over 2 is equal to negative square root 3 over 2. Simplifying the angles within the brackets, we get sine 5 theta over 2 equals negative square root 3 over 2. Now we can use a scientific calculator or special angles to solve for theta. Let's use the calculator. On the calculator, you will press second function sine of negative square root 3 over 2 in brackets to calculate the size of the reference angle. Before we continue with the calculation, note that when you use the inverse sine button on your calculator, you're using a function called arc sine. This is the inverse function of the sine x function. It is used to calculate the angle that corresponds to a specific ratio for a given trig function. Do not confuse the inverse function arc sine x with the reciprocal function cosec x which is 1 over sine x. In other words, the inverse function and the reciprocal of a function are not the same thing. Now back to the example. When you press second function sine of negative square root 3 over 2, using your calculator and brackets in your calculation, you get an angle of negative 60 degrees. The sine function is negative in the third and fourth quadrants. Therefore, using general solution, we get 5 theta over 2 equals negative 60 degrees plus k times 360 degrees, or 5 theta over 2 equals 180 degrees minus negative 60 degrees, which gives 240 degrees plus k times 360 degrees, where k is an integer in both cases. Simplifying... By dividing both sides of the equation by 5 over 2 or multiplying by 2 over 5, we get theta equals negative 24 degrees plus k times 144 degrees or theta equals 96 degrees plus k times 144 degrees as the general solution for this equation. Example 2. Solving trig equations for sine on a given interval using double angles. Calculate the value or values of x in the interval from and including negative 90 degrees up to and including 270 degrees if sine x equals cos 2x minus 1. 
In its current form, we cannot solve the equation. Hence, we need to simplify by using the double angle formula for cos 2x. On the right-hand side of the equation, rewrite cos 2x as 1 minus 2 sine squared x. We use the sine expansion for cos 2x as there is already a sine x on the left-hand side. We get sine x is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x minus 1, which leaves just negative 2 sine squared x on the right-hand side. Then, take all terms to the left-hand side of the equation and you get sine x plus 2 sine squared x equals 0, which is a quadratic trig equation. To solve the equation, we must factorize by taking out a highest common factor of sine x, and you get sine x times, in brackets, 1 plus 2 sine x is equal to 0. Since we have a factor times a factor equal to 0, we can let each factor equal 0 and solve for x. Therefore, sine x is equal to 0, or 1 plus 2 sine x is equal to 0 taking the 1 over to the right of the equality sign and dividing by 2, we get sine x equals negative a half. For sine x equal to 0 and x an element from and including negative 90 degrees up to and including 270 degrees, we use the calculator or special angles to find x equals 0 degrees plus k times 360 degrees, where k is an integer. Or, using 180 degrees minus 0 degrees, we get x equals 180 degrees, plus k times 360 degrees, where k is an integer. So, in the given interval, our solution for x is x is equal to 0 degrees and 180 degrees. We get those values by substituting different integer values for k. For sine x equal to negative a half, an x, an element from, and including negative 90 degrees, up to and including 270 degrees, we get x equals negative 30 degrees, plus k times 360 degrees in quadrant 4. Or x equals 180 degrees minus 30 degrees, which gives x equal to 210 degrees plus k times 360 degrees in quadrant 3, with k an element of integer values. So, in the given interval, our solution for x is x is equal to negative 30 degrees and 210 degrees. The combined solutions for this equation our x is equal to negative 30 degrees, 0 degrees, 180 degrees, and 210 degrees. Example 3. Finding general solutions for cosine using double angles. Determine the general solution of cos 2 theta minus 1 equals negative 3 cos theta. Start by rearranging the equation so that all the terms are on the same side. Now look at the terms carefully. The key lies within the middle term 3 cos theta. Remember, cos 2 theta can be expanded in any one of three ways, but only one of these expansions will work best here. Can you see which one you should choose? Since the middle term is in terms of cosine, you want to choose the cos 2 theta expansion that will keep the left-hand side of the equation in terms of cosine. Hence, we change cos 2 theta to 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Adding like terms, we get 2 cos squared theta plus 3 cos theta minus 2 equals 0. You now have a trig quadratic equation that you can factorize to solve for theta. The two factors of the quadratic are 2 cos theta minus 1 and cos theta plus 2. Therefore, 2 cos theta minus 1 is equal to 0, 
or cos theta plus 2 is equal to 0. From 2 cos theta minus 1 is equal to 0, we take the negative 1 over the equality sign and divide by 2 to get cos theta is equal to a half. From cos theta plus 2 is equal to 0, move the positive 2 to the right of the equal sign and you get cos theta equals negative 2. Let's see how the solutions relate to the cos theta graph on an interval from negative 360 degrees up to and including 360 degrees. Cos theta equals a half has more than one solution on the interval negative 360 degrees to positive 360 degrees, whereas cos theta equals negative 2 has no solutions. The line y equals negative 2 lies below the trig graph of cos theta and does not intersect it at any points. Due to the periodic nature of trigonometric functions, this pattern will continue infinitely in both directions. Hence, we can say cos theta equals negative 2 will have no solution. For cos theta equals a half, you can use your calculator or special angles. On your calculator, use the second function or shift key to calculate the angle. At this point, note the following. When you use the inverse cos on your calculator, you are using a function called arcos. This is the inverse function of the cos function. It is used to calculate the angle that corresponds to a specific ratio for a given trig function. You will get theta equals plus or minus 60 degrees plus k times 360 degrees, where k is an element of integers as the general solution.